Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson, and I'm here tonight with Allison Gingras on my show, Author to Author. Tonight, we're going to be talking about her book, Encountering Signs of Faith. How are you tonight, Allison? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me as your guest. Oh, I, I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, encountering signs of faith is uh, is something that's uh, of interest to me. I, in fact, I'm just currently reading a book called The Vision for You by David Clayton, which uh, is uh, he's going to be interviewed in about a week. But nice. you know, I, I I like how we encounter, how we see um, that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so before we uh, begin, would you like to start us with a prayer? Of course. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Amen. good and gracious God, we thank you so much for calling us together tonight, today, whenever this is being heard, to in learn how we in can encounter you in a deeper, more meaningful, tangible way. I ask you for your outpouring of blessings upon all who we hear this, and of course, upon uh, Cynthia and myself as we discern, Lord, what it is you wish for us to share that may help others grow closer to you. And we ask all of this in your most precious name. Amen. In the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. Of course. Yeah. Um, so, this is uh, an interesting title. I'm wondering um, what led you to write the book. Well, the story started with the adoption of my little girl from China uh, over 14 years ago. We were called to adoption through prayer, through time and adoration, and the Lord made it very clear that our daughter would be deaf. I believed so much what the Lord was saying to us in prayer that I actually started taking American Sign Language courses before we were even matched with a little girl. I assumed that it would just either keep me busy while I waited for her to come home, um, or it would be as it is that I would glorify him and sharing that he did reveal to us this really special um, this special aspect of our daughter, of, of who our daughter was. And I think it came to answer this prayer, like, Lord, how will I know which child is mine? When I give gave birth to my two biological children, there was no doubt I had had the right child with me. But when it came time to adoption, there was some fear and some trepidations, of course, to make sure I, I understood and selected the child that the Lord had for me. So he made it very clear. He told me she'd be three. He told me in prayer that she would be deaf. And indeed, when we were a match with the child, she was deaf and she was three. We named her Faith because it took all the faith in the world that this girl with anxiety had to go all the way to China and bring home a nearly four-year-old child who was profoundly deaf. This, the book, um, the, as the, the the idea of the book came as I was sharing with the acquisitions editor how I taught my daughter Faith the faith. In fact, we call her Faithy in the book because it could get kind of confusing <laughs> talking about faith and teaching faith. It came from when I explained that because she was almost four and she had no language. I did not want to wait for her to develop American Sign Language. I wanted her to know about God immediately. And I knew God could could break through and teach him teach her about him in ways I will never be able to. But I really, as a mom, wanted to start sharing the faith. So we began by sharing what we could see images and holy water, things we could touch with our senses, right? Don't see, hear, touch, feel. Uh, it would be a while before she could receive the Eucharist and taste, but all the different ways that I, as a, a Catholic mom, could bring the faith to her, looking at stained glass windows and introducing holy water and incense and and candles and lighting candles for people, just all of these beautiful visuals that our faith has. And that's where Encountering Signs of Faith came to be. It's kind of a play on names. It's Encountering Signs that brought us to adopt faith. And we tell our adoption story, which was very powerfully led by God, but also how we can encounter God through the signs of faith that we see in our everyday world and the tangibleness uh, that God provides for us in our worlds. Wow. That's, uh, you had to have thought about that profoundly to come, you know, 
to to figure out how to do this you know yeah. that's impressive well i was a, a preschool teacher so i always think god doesn't waste any of uh, any of your life any things that you you pick up along the way if you open your heart to him he will absolutely show you where you can use these gifts and these talents uh, to bless others to bless yourself mm -hmm. but in this case to really um provide this child who came very unaware of many things, this blessing of getting to know God in such a, a mm -hmm. real way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's really great. Thank you. Yeah. So um, how is she doing? Uh, how long have you had her now? So 14 years, she's 18 mm -hmm. years old. What we did discover shortly, um, just a short time ago, after a few years of her being home, is that she actually also has a cognitive disability. So she is doing great. She's still, she learns at about an eight-year-old level, even though she's 18. She reads and, and thinks of her own eight, 12-year-old level. Uh, but her faith, it, it remains childlike. And isn't that beautiful that... Mm -hmm. You know, we could look at this as a disability, but I think it's a beautiful ability that she has to remain childlike and to encounter the world with this childlike trust and confidence in God that we work. I don't know about you, but I've worked for years <laughs> to <laughs> to try to to try to uh, accomplish in my own life. But she's doing beautifully. She's learned American Sign Language despite her um, disabilities, and she is just a happy pleasant beautiful human being that we are overwhelmingly blessed to be a part of her life mm -hmm. that's great thank you yeah so um yeah when you think i've often wondered about disabilities because i often think that it's not so much a disability as much as a person is just different yes. and because it's not exactly on this uh, range that we've decided is normal, mm -hmm. but yes, they she... may often have wonderful gifts that we we don't, you know. Yes. She teaches me something new every day about God's goodness, just how, mm -hmm. how innocent and sweet she is, but yet how trusting and how she just sees the world in such a, a beautiful lens that can we can sometimes lose because we maybe know too much. <laughs> we get jaded by this yeah. world, but not her. She stays so so beautifully um, positive and uh, encouraging, especially to me in my life. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and um, she's learned English well, I assume, so that. She, yeah, she's never. She never learned how to speak. She um, was too old when we adopted her to kind of teach her. She doesn't hear anything at all, but she uh, can read English somewhat. Mm -hmm. Like I said, up like like a third, fourth grade level, and her. But her American Sign Language is incredible. And uh, I want to. I want to. Can I share a story about? I can't believe I almost forgot about this story. Just the things that I find so fascinating about. And what I wanted to share in the book was this idea of like that God loves us all so, so much that you wouldn't think that this little young girl in China would merit such blessings from God, but for her to be adopted and to come here, it's just a miracle upon miracle. Like for instance, you know, she had no language in China. She was never able, no one ever taught her how to express herself. I can't imagine growing up never being able to tell somebody I love them or something simple as I'm hungry or, you know, she's never been able to express a feeling or a thought. So that was one of the, the blessings the Lord gave her. But when she was about 12, we actually discovered she had very severe, serious scoliosis. And my husband, who's a deacon, said, there's going to be a saint for this. Like there's a saint for everything, right? So he starts to uh, Google saints for your for scoliosis and he finds saint gemma galgani saint gemma you may have heard of her was an italian saint she was a young woman who had uh, her parents she was orphaned young when both of her parents passed away and then she developed meningitis that made her lose her hearing and curved her spine there could not be a more perfect saint for my daughter than this orphaned deaf 
woman with with a curvature of a spine who actually wore a brace just like my daughter well her brace was metal and, and uncomfortable my daughter's was uh, like fiberglass but it was still uncomfortable so we started to pray that she wouldn't need surgery because her her curvature was almost 50 degrees and then 23 degrees and then almost 50 degrees. So we made an S. It was pretty severe. And the doctors started talking about surgery. Now, when you don't give birth to a child and you don't know anything about their history, she was abandoned. They told us nothing. They, they There's no medical records or any birth records of her at all. The idea of putting this child under... Um, anesthesia was petrifying. So we started praying, asking the Lord to prevent her from surgery. We, she goes to the doctor, she gets put in this brace. We're told this brace called the Boston brace would not heal her, but it would help the curve from getting worse. That's what we were told. We go back about two months later after starting this treatment and the doctor x-rays her. He comes in the room and he's got this ear to ear grin on his face. And he says, I don't know how to explain this, but her curve, it didn't heal completely, but it had corrected enough that she would, in his words, quote unquote, never need surgery. Wow. That if she wanted it for any kind of um, medical, uh, you know, for for how she looked, that she could, t uh, cosmetic, that's the word I'm looking for. She wanted it for cosmetic reasons. That was, she could do that. But medically, she would never need surgery for her back. And it was just so amazing. Sometimes like we believe in miracles, we believe in God, but sometimes we don't realize he's going to act in our own life. He's going to be there and, and show up in such a big way. So I always tell people, pray boldly. I don't know why my husband and I never prayed for her to be completely healed, but we just really felt so strongly that we didn't want her to have surgery. So pray boldly, pray uh, believing that God, who says he's faithful, will do what is necessary in your life. It's one of my favorite stories about Faithy. Mm. That, yeah, that really is a shocker. Mm. When you initially said, you know, that you, know, that you didn't want to have her to have surgery, I was wondering how that would turn out. But it would never occur to me that even though she probably had considered, you know, the doctor had considered that she needed it, and yeah. yet she didn't. Yes. That's amazing. He was, the doctor was, he, like I said, I can't explain this. Of course, I went into my evangelical mode and started to evangelizing to, <laughs> to the doctor. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, you know, exactly how this happened, because our God is so good, and this saint interceded for her. And uh, when she got confirmed just a few years later, she did choose St. Gemma as her saint, uh, her uh, confirmation sponsor name. Of course, that's what a patronage you have to be under after you get receive a miracle from yeah. somebody. So sweet. <laughs> I love our yep. faith. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It is. It is a good one. It is. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um. I wonder, I often wonder how many miracles there are that occur that people don't even recognize as miracles. Yeah. I think it's a coincidence or good luck or yeah. whatever. I call I firmly, those. Like, yeah, I firmly believe in miracles. Me too. And, and not just for special people and for big things. Like yeah. I call those God, at least it's about the word coincidence. I use the word Godcidence. I've heard people say, you know, God winks, God moments. I like the word Godcidence. And <laughs> they happen in your everyday ordinary life. Uh, just the other day, I was driving to work. I was praying the rosary. And the rosary begins with, I believe in God. Well, even though I've been reverted back to the faith now for nearly 20 years, I still have those moments where the gospel of Mark kind of fills my heart with, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And as yep. I'm saying, God, you know, I believe in God, I start having this whole conversation with him, like, I believe in you, but sometimes I struggle because I can't see you, going back to those tangible encountering signs of faith. And at some points in my life, he had sent this fidelity truck. Fidelity means faithfulness. I've been praying like, Lord, what do you want from me? And this truck goes by just at that moment as I'm saying, Lord, what do you want from me? This fidelity truck goes by. So I'm having this conversation now 10 years later, and I'm saying, yeah. Lord, 
I all right, you send me signs, but and I and I don't want to need them, but I kind of do. And just as I'm saying this, there goes the fidelity truck again. No. Perfect timing. It goes by all the time. It's crazy, but not just randomly. It's when I'm thinking, Lord, what do you want from me? Lord, are you real? He's like, I'll show you I'm real, even though you know you. You're, I have the faith, but he knows I'm human, and that like I feel like he gave us the senses. I can see, I can touch, I can taste, and and for a reason. Like this is for us to encounter not just our world around us, but to encounter him as well. And mm -hmm. I am not afraid to ask, Lord, can you just make me? Please help me know that you are real. I don't need magic, you know, responses to my prayers, though that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> But I just need to know that you are real. And he never leaves that prayer unanswered, at least not in my life. And I don't believe he'd leave that unanswered in anyone's life. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're very lucky that you get, uh, I mean, you get instant results. <laughs> if the fidelity truck goes by. I mean, really. <laughs> Really, God also has a good sense of humor. He does. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. He does. And I yeah. laugh because the truck is, you know, fidelity is this Latin rooted word that means faithfulness. And I, the first time I ever saw it, I laughed and I was like, oh, of course you're using a fancy Latin word, Lord. Like that just makes me laugh. <laughs> that is something. Uh oh, yeah. And I think like, obviously we can't test God and, and ask for signs like, am I going to win the lottery or, you know, is this that or the other thing going to happen and ask for signs. But I've, I've checked with a couple of spiritual directors at this point in my life and, and they've all said like, it is okay to ask God to show you that he's real. Like that's not testing him or tempting him. That's just really trying to grow closer to him and ex emitting your own human weakness. Um, and, and being able to use the visuals of our of our faith, like I love medals, I wear, uh, the book also includes many of sacramentals of our faith, those, those, mm -hmm. those tangible things that aren't blessings of themselves, but carry the blessing of our church, carry the prayers of our church. Um, they're not lucky charms, but they just remind us of the mm -hmm. invisible reality and, and grace of our church. And you know, there's often times where I just, you know, if I'm having a hard day, and if you've ever experienced this, like, I just want to hold my rosary beads. I've been known just to open my Bible and just, you know, hug it. <laughs> like Sometimes I just need to, to feel Jesus with skin, as uh, I've heard other speakers call um, the people who come into our lives or the sacramentals that just remind us of all the graces and blessings that God has provided for us. Like, he didn't just you know, will us into being and then disappear until we die. He's with us every moment of every day. And the scriptures say he can count the number of hairs on our heads. And the Psalms talk about how all of our tears have been collected and kept by God. This is an intimate God that wants to, to be part of our every ordinary, every part of our ordinary life and to embrace that and to be able to share that through encountering signs of faith, through teaching my daughter this and, and now taking those lessons from her and teaching other people has, has been truly a blessing because no one ever taught me that. I was well into my late 30s before I realized that God wanted a relationship like he didn't just will me into being that that he wanted to be part of my life, not just Sunday, but every moment of every day. And that is such a a, a, a lesson of hope that I think we all truly need to hear. At least I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that um, a lot of people are not aware of that. You know, yeah. they're, and, you know, I think it's unfortunate. How is it said about Sunday Mass? It's a, it's a duty, I think they said. Yeah. Like, okay, so that would be like, you know, I mean, it's a duty to make dinner. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, like, really? <laughs> I have to do this or else? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, so I mean that's that's just a very unfortunate word. Yes. You know, so 
Yeah, my husband, I said, who's a deacon, and one day he was telling somebody he had to do the four o'clock mass. And after the person walked away, the pastor at the time said to my husband, very sweet and gently, he said, never say you have to. Say you're privileged to. Say that it, you get to um, serve Mass, that we get to attend Mass and to receive Jesus. Like, these are all privileges and honors. And I love that. Like, it's not a duty. You know, we call it our Sunday obligation, but it's yeah. way more than an obligation. It is mm -hmm. a gift. It's a blessing. One mm -hmm. that um, I think many of us took for granted, at least I did, until COVID hit and I couldn't receive it. And I think that was such a, I know a lot of people were upset that, that, that we couldn't go to mass. But for me, I took that as such a, an eye opener to, because it created a holy longing in my heart for the Eucharist that I had long lost because I had taken for granted that I was able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And I never realized how important that op that opportunity was until I didn't have it. And I, to this day, will always thank God for those few years that we were, or for some people, a few months, uh, were unable to attend Mass and receive communion because I think for many people, me included, me especially, it gave me this holy longing to realize that that is truly Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And I am privileged, and it's not something that I can expect, but something I can long for. Yeah. That's, and, you know, the words are important. Yeah, they really are. They have, even though a word may be accurate, it's also got some implications attached to it. Yeah. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. But just saying what you're, just thinking of what your husband said, I mean, it's like, I will often say, well, I have to, I have to hurry up and get to mass, you know, you know, but, um, but that's because I usually uh, am not on time in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> And as I get older, I feel like that that is something that the elderly should be able to <laughs> to enjoy. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, but um, but funny. yeah. So, but the having to, I'm really referring to getting getting into gear, not like it's I've got to do this. So, but it's uh, the the language is uh, it's easy for people to hear that and misunderstand. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was really wonderful to watch my daughter um discover the Eucharist and and to discover uh she gets she absolutely was fixated and fascinated by the consecration. And in fact, um I used to sit in the pew next to her and try to sign what was happening and she'd get very angry with me. And finally, I realized it's because she'd rather watch what was happening on the altar than what mm -hmm. I was doing. And so I eventually got over my kind of shyness and mm -hmm. stood up um, to the side so that she could, it, you know, she sat in the pew and I stood facing her so she could see what was happening on the altar because that was far more important than the words I was providing for her. She just was enthralled. And then she actually became an altar server for a little while. And that was really, really sweet to see her, um, just her respect and, and and how serious she took it. It was really, a lot of people in the, in the church would, would say that she reminds them of just how special that moment is. Isn't it mm -hmm. interesting how God will give us, like when we start to forget the things that are very important for us to remember. He's very gentle and kind, but direct <laughs> in reminding us uh, with our circumstances. We don't mm -hmm. lose track of what's really going on. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it is interesting. You know, I um, try to go to church, uh, go to mass every day, um, but I live in Vermont <clears throat> on a hill. Oh. <laughs> I'm a I'm, New Englander too. I get it. <laughs> so, where do you live? In I live in Massachusetts, just south oh, of Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to go down the hill Oof. and then I drive through the city. 
and then I have to go up. I mean, it's probably the same hill, but there's no way of getting from here to the church without going down the hill and then back up the hill. Oof. And, and <laughs> that's, you know, so it snows a lot up here. Yes. And then we get rain that goes into the snow and turns it into ice. It's just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but um but you know we fight through those things but um i you know i'm a convert and um many years now um but uh i you know i really since the first eucharist when i received the eucharist i can breathe better mm, I, beautiful. I, get more, I get more air and I mean, it's not, it, and it's like, it's a, it's like an air that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird. No, this is beautiful. But you know, so here I am, I'm driving down. And I go along and I drive back up and it's almost as if God says, okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, um. I've not heard other people uh, say that, you know, that they have, um, that they breathe differently mm -hmm. or the air is different somehow. So. That is fascinating. I get goosebumps. Um, when I receive the sacraments, like when I get absolution at, at um, reconciliation, at confession, I often will feel goosebumps come over my entire body of oh, the holy spirit for me i guess shows up as a goosebump i don't know it's like god bumps it, you know, i just get overwhelmed like sometimes when i receive communion the same thing i would just feel like this beautiful chill of um just uh, all over my body so mm -hmm. even when my husband will bless me or uh, we have a, a, an elderly deacon in our parish who he, I don't, I don't know how the Holy Spirit does this, but he will just put his big hand on the top of your head, and you just feel like this heat, this sensation goes through your whole body as he's praying. He just has such this this gift from God just to to move the spirit within you, and it just every time never fails. He just puts this big mitt on my head, and he starts to pray, and I just feel this heat go through my entire body. I really do feel like, again, that encountering signs of faith, we can encounter them in, in the way we react to the mm -hmm. to the spirit moving within us. Because that's a pretty big moment of grace when you yeah. are receiving the Eucharist. Like yeah. Jesus himself, we mm -hmm. become a tabernacle. Like you can't get any closer to Christ than in that very moment. So mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. just, I, I've never heard that, but I think that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it's as if I get more life in me somehow. Well, and amen, that, you do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, I just, and I notice it only because of, I not only, but I notice it because of the breathing difference. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really something. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. so it's like these moments, it kind of brought me to write this book, Encountering Signs of Faith, because I really wanted other people to encounter god in the real tangible powerful ways you know i'm a storyteller in my book and in, in, in all my books i've been very blessed to write several books i wrote the state connected journals for catholic women and uh coming up from our sunday visitor very soon will be the little handy guide the handy little guide to novenas and i love to tell stories and i love to tell stories of how god breaks through through that veil between heaven and earth into our everyday ordinary lives. And he doesn't just do that for me because I'm a, a Jesus freak, but I totally am. But he does that for everyone. Like if you open your heart and look for God in the world, he will, he's there. I mean, he created everything. He's in the wind. He's in the, the sky, the rain, the snow that we have to trudge through in us New Englanders. <laughs> he's in all of that, but he's also in these beautiful encounters we have with other people he's in the the rituals of our our church he's obviously in a very real way in our sacraments and just i, I really wanted people to read the stories that i tell not just of myself but i tell saint stories and stories of other people that i've encountered and i want them to then start to look at the world differently with their eyes open looking for where god is and and be 
um, not afraid to be courageous and and have that uh, that willingness to let God in because we're very closed and guarded and and sometimes fearful. Maybe we've we've had a relationship with our own father that's been uh, been strained or difficult, and so looking at a loving father is difficult. And so we maybe just read the Old Testament where we see this punishing God and think, oh, this is the only one aspect of God. Well, he's a just God that comes sometimes through punishment, but it's never unwarranted. He's a very just, merciful, loving God. And I really was hoping, and, and, I, and I've seen, praise God, through this book that people have been able to have these encounters of faith with God and just really open themselves to to recognize him and to seek him in in different ways. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, thank you. He is everywhere <clears throat> and uh we fail to notice, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so and then people don't even try to notice, so which is sad. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think our stories are so important. We're never going to convert people or change people's hearts by teaching them the rules of the faith, by pulling out our catechism. But when do we start to share stories? When I mm -hmm. tell my daughter's story about how God called us to adopt her and in prayer revealed that she would be deaf and in like all the, I mean, every aspect of it, like we had no money. I remember saying to God, I'm open to do your will, but you've seen my bank account. Like, how are you going to make this happen? And him reminded me that he's the, the God of providence and that I didn't have to worry about. And and I never had to worry. And I really didn't have to worry because he provided every, every, every cent that we needed. In fact, one time we had to uh, make a, a payment and pass in some paperwork and we needed a pretty substantial amount of money. And I was in prayer and adoration, just begging the Lord for it. And the next day, our taxes showed up. And it was ex exactly what we needed, plus 70 extra dollars. So we went out for Chinese food to celebrate, because that seemed like the perfect way to celebrate bringing home a child from China. And our family, we call it faith food. <laughs> but just that he's so integrated into our everyday life, and that he's he provides for us. And just to be able to go to prayer and ask and have this these truths revealed is just such a gift. And I, I just, I can't imagine if I had ignored that uh, movement, that nudge of the Spirit in my life, what faith life would be like, but what our life would be like. Um, I'm so glad that I trusted in God to do what He says, the faithful God that He is, I will provide. I will... Um, you know, whatever it is you need to fulfill my will, I will give it to you. I'm a faithful God. That's right in the scriptures. A million times he says, I'm faithful. You just have to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. In my life, he's, uh, I, I converted due to a religious experience. And, um, which I was not looking for. <laughs> Those are always the best ones. <laughs> oh yeah. This was, this was a killer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had, uh, I'll give you the brief version. Um, I went to, uh, Rome with my husband, uh, my first husband who died of cancer. And, um, we went to Rome because his mother was turning 85 and she'd never been to Rome and wanted to go. So we wow. took the whole family and I was not Christian. So I, um, <clears throat> I said, well, I'm willing to go, but you know, you guys can go do the churches and stuff and I'm going to do the history and the art and all that kind of stuff. And that was okay. So one day, uh, Jimmy said to me, you know, um, we should do something together as a family. And I pointed out to him that we had been having breakfast and dinner together. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> young and stupid. Uh, anyway, so um, he asked me if we could all get together and just like go on a bus tour. And I said, all right. 
but I'm not going to go into anything religious. And it wasn't because I was anti-religious or anti-Catholic. I just wasn't interested. Yeah. You know, so um, I was sitting in the bus by myself. They turn off the air conditioner and there was no bathroom. So I said, well, I'm going to go in the catacombs, which oh, was what. Wow. So I went in the catacombs and there was a group of people having mass. I knew what that looked like. And I thought to myself, you know, why are they having mass? It's not Sunday. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> the, ignorance, the ignorance, absolute ignorance. So I kept walking, caught up with the tour. Um, and of all things, there was an Asian, I believe he was a priest, a priest he had on a cassock. And he was uh, standing behind this like stone table slash altar. And I don't really remember anything he said, but mm -hmm. I just, um, I just had this thing go through my mind. I don't know if I should call it a vision or not, but it went through my mind and it was, uh, in letters, the truth with a capital T Wow, is Catholic church. And I looked and I thought, whoever did that, they they spell truth wrong. It shouldn't have been. <laughs> it shouldn't have been capitalized, right? Oh, that's funny. It is. But, you know, and then I stopped dead and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Who did that? You know, <laughs> I knew wow. I would have thought it up. You know, I never would have thought it up because right? I, and I didn't at that point know even what it meant. Wow. But uh, anyway, so I converted because of that. And, wow. uh, yeah. And, um, well, of course, I did have, finally, someone told me what the capital T meant. <laughs> 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 so, um, so anyway, I ended up, I ended up uh, converting and becoming a Roman Catholic theologian. Wow. I've taught for 200 seminarians that are priests now. And hundreds and hundreds of lay people online and um in in the seminary where i worked i of course when i converted i uh i was already a doctor so i went on and studied for i actually studied uh two degrees for theology one was the well no three and wow. m a postmaster certificate and then i got the license to teach that's so, amazing. Yeah, but I mean, it was it was like the weirdest thing in the world. It's like, you know, I'm just walking through. Gee, why are these people having mass? It's not something <laughs> I know. It's like whack upside the head. <laughs> it, God's not really subtle. I can tell you right now, God's not subtle. <laughs> no, that's good, though, because we're so, we don't have the, I don't think most of us have the capacity to pick up these no. little hints, you know? So he really does have to be. He needs to send Mack trucks. He needs to send Mack trucks. Like <laughs> a locomotive my way. <laughs> right over me. <laughs> I love that expression, the spiritual two by four, right? Like I've been hit by a few of those. <laughs> I like that. The spiritual two by four. Yeah. But yeah. you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting because God is apparent to us also. Yes. And, um, Accordingly, sometimes there's no way to get through to you except with a two by four. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, God certainly doesn't use a two by four, but it's like He uses something that you can't miss. Right. Yes. You know, you can't miss. Right. And people do choose to miss, of course. Uh, but I, yeah, I just, I, you know, they keep looking and looking and I was like, what are you looking for? Because I was lost. Like, I totally get that. I was trying to fill my, my, my broken heart, my, my hardened heart with everything. Like I was out partying, I was buying stuff, I was going into debt and I just couldn't find anything that filled that, that God's size hole in my heart, like St. Augustine says. And I didn't know it was a God's size hole until I finally like exhausted every avenue I had of trying to feel better. And then one day on my knees, just completely gutted said, all right, I was given the Catholic faith as a child. 
I kind of threw it away. I'll try it again. Like I'll give it a whirl. And lo and behold, I you said earlier about the ignorance. I had such an ignorance of my own faith. I didn't mm-hmm. know anything. I didn't know the, the I didn't even know the scriptures um were you know like that they were part of our our mass. I went to mass all the time and didn't realize that the readings were the scriptures. The our father I didn't realize came from Christ himself. I can remember being in second grade like complaining I had to memorize this stupid prayer. <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> that stupid mm-hmm. prayer was the one that Jesus gave us when he was asked, "Hey, how should we pray?" Well, <laughs> here's how the son of God prays. <laughs> I don't <laughs> It, and I wonder how many people like myself grew up in a faith that was being taught by people who didn't know the faith, because they were taught by people who didn't really know the faith. And mm-hmm. I think that's, again, part of my um, drive, my desire to be a writer, because I want to somehow tell as many people as I can the truth mm-hmm. of the faith, because it's so rich and deep and beautiful. And there's mm-hmm. literally something for everyone in the Catholic Church to bring you happiness and wholeness, a joy, not happiness. I mean, happiness is fleeting, but joy is that feeling that nobody can take from you. And that's what Jesus wants to give you, that that joy, that hope of heaven that this this world can't destroy. And Mm. that's, you know, I I just want everybody to know, I want to get up on the rooftop if I wasn't afraid of heights and I would scream it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm not getting on the roof with you. <laughs> I won't even get in an airplane if I can avoid it. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be safe. <laughs> Funny. St. <laughs> Catherine of Drexel used to get on boats back in her day to travel, and she hated it. And that's kind of how I feel about airplanes. And her sister actually um, offered to take her on an all expense paid cruise to give her a, a time of vacation and rest because she had been so busy in her ministry. And Catherine says to her sister, I love this quote, I only get on boats for Jesus. And this is how we feel about airplanes. <laughs> I only get on airplanes for Jesus. <laughs> I don't go on trips, but I will fly to speak. I've been out to Reno and Fresno in the last year, like I will get on an airplane for Jesus, just like uh, St. Catherine of Drexel, get on a boat. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, there's just something, it seems, well, you know, if a boat goes down, if you know how to swim, you might survive. But if, if a plane <laughs> comes down, you know how to fly, you know? <laughs> That's it's funny. Kind of, no. <laughs> Nope. I Ooh. always I pray the rosary on every takeoff, and oh, yeah. I say, if we're gonna go down, can you just take my soul? Like, like as soon as we're going down, like don't don't make me suffer. I'm gonna die anyway. Like you said, I don't know how to fly. So yep. if this is the end, just you know, you can take my soul. Just as soon as we start to plummet, I'm good. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll never have to be tested on that. But oh, I know. I pray every, that's one of my favorite sacramentals. I work for Family Rosary, the Father Peyton's ministry, the family that prays together, stays together, stays together. Um, and, you know, again, this, even that's a God story. I was working for a women's, national women's ministry, loved it. But, mm-hmm. you know, everyone gets to that point where they just say, Lord, I just want to make sure I'm doing what you want me to do. I was getting older, and you know, once we get to that midway point of what we think is our midway point, we uh, I like to just make sure doing what God wants. So I did a novena, nine days of prayer to Father Patrick Payton, and all I did was I asked Father Payton to, to ask the Lord to use my gifts and talents where they were best, uh, where they would be best used. Like just make sure that I'm using my gifts and talents where God wants me to use them. Within days of finishing that prayer, I was offered a job at Family Rosary, Father Peyton's ministry, that I never applied for. So I always teased my my coworkers that I was handpicked by a saint to work and hit, to continue his work here on earth. Like this <laughs> prayer is so powerful and so beautiful, and so I get to continue that work of uh, sharing the rosary, sharing family prayer, and. I've had the best discussions on airplanes when I pull out my rosary beads, considering it's depending on who's next to me. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing, lady? I'm like, oh, let me tell you. 
<laughs> I had great conversations about my rosary beads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A very tangible sign of faith. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is all interesting how life just works out. And yeah, how we develop our own little personalities, like. You know, just take me when we start to plummet. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to remember. If I ever have to complain and pray, I don't have to. <laughs> but if I do have to, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the thing as we're going up. It's like if anything goes wrong, like the engines fall off, please just take my soul right away. Yeah, just just take me. Like, don't, don't let me, you know, don't prolong this. Just... Just take me home to you, please. <laughs> I, I um, to the church, but then he's like, and now you're going to help me train my priest. Like, that's all in. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. How long did you teach? Are you still teaching? Yes. Uh, I, I uh, taught... Um, at Holy Apostles for, I think it was some, somewhere between 28 and 30 years. Some days I've got to, some day I've actually got <laughs> dates, but probably closer to 30 years. Um, I also um, did their statistics. I was not just a professor, but I had, uh, my doctorate was in sociology. Oh. And um, I, um, you know, with a number of people of the social sciences. So mm -hmm. I did that. And then when I left Holy Apostles, I went to Pontifex University, which I really like. It's 100% uh, online, um, MT Master of Theological Studies, and also a uh, doctorate in theology. And wow. so when you, um, we have quite a few students from all over the world, um, everything, of course, is done as a, in English, but I guess English has sort of become like the old Latin, you know, where it's the it's the world's language to some extent, yeah. anyway. But uh, we have quite a few students, and uh, they hired me as the dean of the theology faculty, and wow. so I do that. I do that. I teach, and the fun part is I still do the statistics. <laughs> 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 but um but anyway i really i really enjoy the job and uh, yeah the book that i just mentioned vision for you which is is was written um by my boss david clayton dr david clayton and it's it really is about you know um the spiritual life so in a in a practical sense it's like yeah. how do you do what you're supposed to do and you know um so i i find it to be very interesting i think that's uh, such a great topic because i think people don't know how to integrate faith into mm -hmm. their everyday life mm -hmm. you know, like i i tease that i have coffee with christ you know, like i try to spend those first moments of the day with my spiritual reading, maybe looking at the scriptures. Um, when I drive in the car, I like to pray the rosary. Uh, I used to do live radio back in the day, maybe 2015, 16. And I remember being on air once saying, oh, I was having the best time in my car. I turned off the radio <laughs> and my screen lights up from the producer. Please do not tell people <laughs> to turn off the radio. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably, probably not the best advice. No, that's or not radio host to give. <laughs> yeah, yeah, turn this off and just enjoy the quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, like the end of the day, like how how do we go through it and bring God into our our ordinary moments? When my boys were little, 
I had a lot of housework to do. So I would pray while I folded laundry. I would thank God for each one of those little, you know, onesies, even though it was giving me carpal tunnel <laughs> to, to fold them all. When I had to wash the dishes, I would thank God for having the, the, the money, the means to feed my children, the roof over my head as I was vacuuming. Like it, it doesn't have to be on your knees all day long praying. Like that's not integrating faith into your life. It's like, no. what does this look like in the ordinary movement of my life? Like, how do I acknowledge God in the everyday ordinary of, you know, I have to work. And I, I think it was Matthew Kelly who writes at the top of all of his papers, JMJ, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, just to kind of rem remind him. And I think um, it, it might be Scott Hahn that writes AM, I forget the initials, the one that's AMDA or H or something that just says like all glory to God in Latin. I don't know. I'm not good at that stuff. But anyway, just this little ways of of incorporating. Like I like to leave a rosary because I on my desk across my computer just to remind me I'm doing this for God. I mean, even if I was a trash man, I would be doing my work as well as I could to provide for my family. And everything we do can bring glory to God. Even taking out the trash or changing a dirty diaper or like we don't have to you know be at church and on our knees to glorify god in our in our life and in the life we choose to live so what's your next uh writing uh ambition going to be your next uh book well i just uh, handed in to my editor at our sunday visitor the next stay connected journal called jesus heals that's the 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 working title Jesus heals, and it's all the places in the scriptures where Jesus heals, doesn't heal, um, how he heals, and it's really looking at um, how Jesus comes to make us whole and how we're called into the suffering and how that suffering sanctifies us and strengthens us, um, but that Jesus, every encounter with Jesus never leaves us the same, whether mm -hmm. we walk away fully healed or or we walk away never needing surgery for a scoliosis, or he leaves the, for me, it's, I have eczema. So if he leaves the eczema behind, because it allow, allows me to, to be dependent on God and to keep myself, um, it, like that thorn that St. Paul could never get rid of. Like sometimes our chronic illnesses, our chronic conditions are there because they help us to be dependent and to remember that we need God in our life. So Jesus Heals is coming out in 2025. Uh, I'm really excited to share that mm -hmm. book with people. That's good. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have a very happy, fulfilling life. I do. Yeah. It's not always perfect. I don't want to like, oh, but no. it's filled with joy because it's filled uh, with Jesus. That. You are, you are filled with joy. Thank you. It shows. Yeah. Thank you. That's the greatest compliment. Thank you. I like that compliment. Good. <laughs> You're welcome. It's true. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, well. Okay. Um, so if you do, uh, when you write your next book, you should get in touch with Sebastian and I'm sure he'll set up an interview for you. I'm, I would uh, love that. Yeah, I, I won't be the um, interviewer. <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm moving out of it. Um, I've done almost 400. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm starting to slow down a little bit on that. So... <clears throat> Well, thank you for your ministry up until this point, and I'm really glad that I got to be a part of it. Thank you. That's very kind to say. I mean okay. it. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're if we lived next door to each other, we'd be drinking coffee together every morning. <laughs> <laughs> or wine <laughs> every night. <laughs> and all <of> personalities. <laughs> oh. Clearly, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like to close us with prayer? I would love to. In the name mm -hmm. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, you are so good and so kind and so merciful, so loving. We are very grateful to be 
called your beloved daughters and sons. We ask you to continue to reveal yourself to us in the world around us and the people we meet. We ask you to continue to fill in us with grace that we may encounter you and bring you to others in all that we do and say. And we thank you, Lord, for this time together, for the enlightenment that you've given us in this moment. We ask you to continue to walk with us every day. Amen. Amen. Your Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again for the interview. I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> oh, me too. Thank you so much. What a blessing. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. God bless. I'll end this now. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Same here.